Hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. I better tighten this. Bad things are going to happen. Okay. Okay. Tonight, I made goulash the old-fashioned way. Uh, this is one of my better ones. Let me show you. Uh, this is old-fashioned goulash. And I'm going to make some uh, uh, homemade garlic bread. You can buy it, but if you have a dollar, I mean Walmart uh, French bread, might as well make your own. Uh, that is really good with uh, homemade goulash. Okay. So I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. So uh, my job is to discover um, low-cost meals in case it, we ever need them, and hopefully that day never comes. Uh, probably if you're very, very thrifty, it's probably everything is probably going to be uh, okay. I have been through a lot of recessions. Um, two bad, well, three bad ones I can think of. And I am uh, 69, so I would say, uh-oh, I would say they seem like they come about once every 20 years, like it or not. Oh, wait, there was one when I was in college, and I remember, you know, I'm sitting there, and the teacher says, well, during a bad recession, the first thing people cut back on is uh, college. So that's pretty bad. So it's garlic, salt, and butter. And then uh, uh, when I was married to my husband, uh, I guess I was around 25 or so, uh, they had, you know, nobody had any cash. And uh, I hoarded some cash by uh, selling my beauty shop. That was the first time I, I threatened to divorce my husband. So I bought this nice little house because I had $3,500. And then I was working in this beauty shop. Uh, I was mentioning this beauty shop, I think it was yesterday at the gym. People didn't even have, hairstylists were pretty, uh, pretty broke. And I remember this, these, uh, this guy, a couple of them I worked for with, and uh, it was like, uh, okay, so I'll just slip this. It was like uh, around four of us fairly good hairdressers were working. One of the places where we first met up was the, the Sears basement. And I remember at lunchtime, I really couldn't afford a cinnamon bun or any candy in Sears. In fact, I couldn't really afford anything in Sears. Uh, and we worked in the basement, and I would go into the basement in the morning, and I would come out the back door at night. So here is my um, goulash. I think I'm going to put it all in this bowl. So it's old-fashioned, and sometimes uh, the old-fashioned stuff can be pretty tasty. Uh, but if you're not old, okay, now I'm going to mention something. If you can see, there's some grease along the edges. So either you can eat it from the middle, and then when you refrigerate it, the grease will uh, come, you know, to the top, and you can remove it. But if times are really uh, bad, you might want to eat it like in some... You, it's no, no time to be worried about your cholesterol. So here it is, homemade. My mother, you, my mother-in-law used to make this every single week, once a week. She made it a little bit different. I will show you one of the things I sell are, are purses. And this is such a cute purse. I will sell it when I'm done with it. I'm not done with it yet. Okay, so uh, where's my goulash? Sell all your old stuff. Old-fashioned goulash, hamburger, fry, and bacon grease. So this was a, a pretty good hamburger, and it didn't have that much grease in it. 
So I had a little bit of Dollar Tree oil. I think that, yeah, I just put like a tablespoon in there. And I fried my um, hamburger. So what I wanted to do is, is flavor up my hamburger, flavor up my grease, because I wasn't going to um, add as much hamburger. A lot of people who make this, they'll use a pound, maybe two pounds of hamburger, so it'll be really meaty. But what I had was, I had this a quarter pound hamburger that I got for a dollar off. And I'm eating my freezer down. And I didn't fry it in bacon grease because why use my bacon? That's adding cost to this cheap meal. But I had this maple bacon seasoning. I think I got this at, Al at um, Aldi's. Parmesan and garlic chili lime salt, habanero salt, but I use the maple bacon and I put quite a bit on the meat because I only had a quarter pound meat. Uh, large onion, I just use my, now this is something I will buy again in the large size. Dry bacon, I put a little handful, maybe about a tablespoon. Um, okay, uh, one can kidney beans. These are really great uh, from Walmart. This is really not like chili, but these chili beans taste good. Um, I'm trying to show the ingredients because I was watching videos where they didn't speak any English. A uh, one can stewed tomato, and I blended a little, just a couple pulses in the um, the blender so that I. If you like big chunks, though. And uh, then, uh, so it's a can of kidney beans. Now my mother-in-law used macaroni. A can of tomatoes, cayenne pepper, but I had my chili beans, salt and pepper. So then uh, my mother-in-law, at the same time she was frying the hamburger, would fry uh, bell peppers. But I stockpile these good pickled vegetables and you might think hey, that is not going to be good oh yeah you add good ingredients it's going to be good and you get the jar i paid 389 that was discounted uh oh i better check my uh, garlic bread ah it's looking good uh, okay so owie i'll show you in a minute it's really hot so um I, I stockpiled all various kinds of these, about six different kinds. And so in this jar, I think tomorrow I will make some pickles. It will be pickles and bell peppers. Put any kind of vegetables in there and pickle them. So let me give you the recipe. So one thing we can do is find some low cost um, recipes. Okay, what I was going to do is cut this about here and you know cut it in thirds and make a hamburger but i i decided to show you guys my goulash while it was on my my mind okay so life is good and i hope everybody is stockpiling a little food so now okay the first uh the first part is the cheap meal that's very key Another thing, okay, so I went Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, conserving all my money for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week, I had two times as much money, not spending much money Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, say if you got paid. And so no, today is actually a free day, and I could, uh, I could, you know, let go of some of my money, so you might be thinking these pickles cannot be good in this if you get this is not a pickle first of all it's something else it looks like a zucchini you could use anything you've got actually this is very tasty if you cook it good it's going to be good So here is my garlic bread. Okay, so 
there is dinner and that is so easy to make which uh only thing is i want to mention is um i um fried the hamburger then i add all the ingredients and i cover it and i cook it maybe about 45 minutes to really get all the flavors in there and uh this could be spaghetti as well this would be a good spaghetti dinner you could make it essentially the same way. Uh, just put mushrooms. This garlic bread is good. I should make a little pizza out of some of this French bread tomorrow. Maybe. We'll see. I mean, I can only make so many. Once you get the food in your house, uh, this would be good for dipping in some spaghetti sauce. Walmart brown cola. Watching every little penny, you guys. All right. So, okay. Retail leaders are culling the herd. What is culling the herd? To reduce or control the size of something such as a herd by removal as by hunting or slaughter of especially weak or sick individuals. So in ranching, if the feed is scarce or the feed is, is too expensive, they will take the cattle to market early, you know, to uh, keep the, the profits up. Also in hunting, they will give like, when I was in uh, college, they go, how would you like to, um, how would you like to work at the, the border crossing and check for the slaughtered deer? I go, oh, no, thank you. I don't want to. Uh, so uh, they will issue high hunting licenses to, if the deer are too um, plentiful. So now back to uh, retailers culling the herd. In, why? Impending recession. The national economy on shaky ground and uncertainty about impending uh, recession. That's leading to job loss, like restaurants and places to shop. Okay, $1,000 uh, trees closing, 371 uh, store locations of 99 cent only in California, Arizona, Nevada, and Texas. Target closing nine locations to shutter because of retail crime and also um target is adjusting to the reduced spending of the public maybe because they have less money six walmart stores two in california and 900 mcdonald's okay that is a lot of of um of retailers okay uh Okay, now, so if there's high job loss, there's interruption in, in income. Don't wait. Immediately apply for EBT. Some people can't qualify. Find uh, the food pantry. So instead of going grocery shopping on Friday and spending money, you go to the food uh, what are these things? Pantries, churches, Salvation Army. Here in California, there's one a day. I might go to some. We'll see. Uh, and find some low-cost meals. Okay, even if you're doing the Dave Ramsey. I've been doing the Dave Ramsey. One thing I didn't do was I kept all my credit in stellar condition, just in case something like this happens. Uh, one time, one of my customers lost his job, and I go, does the bank know? And he goes, it just happened. I go, get a line of credit, like on the quick, quick. He goes, that's a good idea. I go, yeah. So even if you're doing the Dave Ramsey, and you're, you're well prepared for emergencies, and they're considered inconveniences, uh, take the disruption of your income uh, seriously, I mean, why? Because they decided to call you like they considered you. That's also like the government can be this way. Well, uh, you're expendable. Excuse me, my family does isn't expendable. Um, 
they used to do that to me and well uh, you know and i go hello i have a family thank you so um you want to treat any disruption of your income as or like when i lost my apartment so what i can just live on the streets well you have enough money you can relocate well yeah well that costs me money i don't work hard like i do so you decide if i'm expendable or if you know i can uh, readjust um okay now so okay so now this is why we want to consider prepping as a way of life the preppers have been going okay i could have told you i've been telling you so we need shelter so out here i see people displaced seniors too uh no shelter living in cars or homeless you need shelter first water food you can go to the pantry uh cars and gasoline i'm keeping my car on uh on full because the price is probably going to go up cash and a weapon okay and also i'm preparing for an emp attack no power that means no water so today i resell i uh refilled six of my waters at walmart and if it's cold you need heat remember this lovely rose quartz um necklace i bought this for myself for valentine's day I'm so glad I bought it. Okay, so now, so, okay, millions of Americans to lose jobs. Uh, 7.4 million out of 158 million. Okay, we have immigrants uh, making up 15% uh, of the total population. That's just the way it works. More is coming, and, you know, perhaps uh, your job might be up in for to the chopping block you might be considered uh expendable okay so now have you guys follow jam from new york city saves money and she has a different name now but it's jam from new york city something saving money but anyway so uh the the you want so i she did save one dollar a day so when I used to go to the swap meet, I would swing by 99 cent only store that's going out of business now and buy $30 worth of food. So $1 a day is $30 worth of food. So today I did a $30 stockpile. So if you don't have a stockpile, I want to explain to you what I do. Okay, I forgot to mention to you yesterday I bought these, I mean last month, I bought these plant milks 50% off. They expire the 16th of February, 2024. So I want to eat these on my cereal. Um, I was following Melissa Neal, one of the uh, famous bodybuilders. And she said, oatmeal is essential. It's not something, there's no like, would you like to eat it? No, you would like to eat it. So I thought, oh, and one of the girls at the gym told me she is a pescatarian. So they are like vegetarians, but they eat eggs and dairy and fish. And I thought that could work because you need some fish and some nuts. So any diets that, I would not want to exclude dairy. Absolutely not. Garlic bread with no, no, that was my homemade butter. Okay, the first thing I bought was four of these toilet papers. And I bought this stuff at Walmart. And the reason I bought those is because during uh, COVID, there it was an issue. So I thought just buy at least one or two extra every time you go to the store. So it's going to build up. Okay, so now here is... This is, I think, 12, this would hold 12 cans. So uh, the first thing I bought was four cans of beans. So basically, this is a bean meal. I'm not suffering eating of my bean meal, not one bit. I like this. My mother-in-law and father-in-law dearly love to eat that. I bought black beans. These are one of the most loved beans, and it was 88 cents. And I looked for the long expiration, 226. 
butter beans june 26 and these were i didn't write the price 143 okay what i make i make aunt nancy's lima beans with these so i just cook them with bacon kind of like that bacon or um ham and i put you know garlic onion whatever i have around the house but in the when it's um when they're done, I put one tablespoon of butter and I add some uh, evaporated milk undiluted to make them nice and uh, creamy. I am gonna be making some, um, some seven layer bean dip. That's a good thing. Then I got uh, ranch style beans. Oh, I wanna get these closer in case I have foreign viewers. The reason I buy four, it's like stockpiling and then ranch beans. Uh, you can make these with um, with sausages, but mostly what I like these for is I buy low cost steaks when I can find them, and I have I just fry a steak with some ranch dry beans. These are with jalapenos and some corn and then uh, pinto beans and i like getting regular pinto beans because then i can make um beans and cornbread or i can make some kind of refried beans so i and so that is a month one two three four four meals and i showed you yesterday i showed you my soup you know and i've been okay then okay so i have my beans and the reason for this is if we don't have that much meat like that is a nice big bowl of food with only a quarter pound of hamburger. Okay, I bought uh, sliced carrots. So mainly what I use these for is like any kind of meal. I might have potatoes. I might have rice with carrots on the side. Uh, mixed vegetables. These are good. What I like to do is drain them good. I make tuna. I put mixed vegetables and I could put pasta and uh, that would be good. Uh, corn, this is the other thing, like the, um, so, okay, a dollar six, a dollar and 64 cents. Mo for years, the only vegetable we ate was corn. And then look how expensive um, uh, mushrooms are. So anything that is like, you can substitute for uh, meat, you want to stockpile. You could, if you can make some stew, you could put some carrots in, in them. Okay, so then I bought this spaghetti sauce. You could dip your garlic bread in that. A lot of times there's good uh, recipes on the back. 142. Okay, this is a 42% increase. It was a dollar. It was less than a dollar. Uh, stewed tomatoes, that's what I used. Uh, usually when I, I cook with them, I grind them first. Um, this is really good. Okay, so all of these are tomato-based because then, you know, if you don't have a veggie, but mainly you see how this one has meatballs and see how my pasta sauce has meat, so if I had to uh, survive. So then, now this is ridiculous, but I thought, you know what? I bought this, this is like steak sauce, five fifty eight dollars now. I thought, get it now. Um, you know, you have plenty of food if you do. If you don't, then get a cheaper one. But uh, then you can have a little steak sauce on your food. Then I bought uh, this alcohol for three ninety eight dollars because during the COVID, so everybody's paranoid, there's no alcohol, there's no gloves, there's no masks, there's no toilet paper. And my neighbor worked in some kind of a job and he cut himself really bad. I go, you have to have good alcohol. He goes, it's gonna sting. I go, yeah, that's true. And so I poured half a bottle on his wound and gave him the other half. So you wanna make sure you have this around. Then uh, Walmart, this one Walmart in El Cajon I like, let's see, expires 2024. Anyway, it was marked down. What I do is I keep it in the uh, freezer after I open it. 
I keep almost everything that's open in the refrigerator. So, you know, that way I never have insects. One of the reasons I wanted to uh, trim up my yard is just so it would look nice, but I surveilled uh, a rat. And then my neighbor told me there was a rat in his uh, garage. So I will get some uh, rat poison. And then I got this marked down. This stuff, this Chick-fil-A uh, dipping sauce, I had this at my son's. And uh, it's expensive. It's like, say if it's $3.73, so I got a dollar off. So I thought, okay, I'll buy some. And then, you know, I'll have some for my chicken because I usually eat uh, chicken every single week, at least one time a week. So um, that is how I stockpiled uh, 30, uh, $30 worth of food. So I... If this, if this is a recession, you can think about it this way. Okay, th the $30 I spent today is $30 I don't have to spend next week, next year, or next month. So if the inflation spikes, what they say is they're going to spike it way up. I think I paid $5.47 for a gallon of gas today. They're going to spike things uh, way up, and then when they bring them down, which is still high, people are going to accept that. I think that is probably true. So, um, I'm going to be doing every cheap thing I can think of. But, uh, okay, so they give you about, eight, let's say if it was only uh, $2,400 a year EBT, even if you had your EBT, if you went to the uh, food pantries and if you um, got your food like marked down 50%, I was telling one of the girls, if you go to the swap meet and you take like your 10, 10 bags of junk and you make two or $300 and then you go and you buy yourself, you pack your freezer full of expensive meat. So you use your... Um, you use your EBT to buy some decent food because you have, this is decent food. It's good enough. I've been eating this way all of my life. Okay, so um, now one thing that's nice to buy is a big bag of walnuts. So a one quarter pound hamburger, that's, and I took a quarter pound corned beef out of my uh, freezer. So I know I have to eat that. Hot dogs or sausage, tuna or salmon, chicken, peas and bacon. So this is a um, bean meal, but that can be made with macaroni. It could be made into a pasta meal and pancakes and eggs. Here's the, uh, this was yesterday, but you never know how these are going to feed. So I want to make sure, um, you know, it's funny. Some of my videos have had some pretty high views. And I can't really tell you what people are attracted to on those uh, views. But I noticed that people uh, from other countries are watching my uh, videos. I want to mention oatmeal. I would buy big, I would buy the 10 pounds and just get used to eating it. So you like to this point now I'm getting looking forward. <laughs> Sandwiches. I bought sandwiches from Dollar Tree. I find them to be good. And soup. Homemade or, um, you know, in the can. Okay, now, just about the cans. Your, your cans are going to uh, save your life. Because if something happens, you have liquid in your cans. And another thing I would suggest is some grape juice. I'm trying to grow grapes. No. Corn, peas, green beans, tomatoes, potatoes, and mixed vegetables. Rice, uh, potatoes, stuff to make bread. So be thinking about that. But mainly, try to figure out, okay, what kind of food that is storable. And, you know, if you keep your um, cans, like, in a cool place, they will, you can use them indefinitely, or you can give them away. 
So out here, I live in a good neighborhood, but across the street from me, there's a hill and uh, there's some homeless living out there and they must come or else it's the residents. And if I leave stuff in by the dumpster, it's gone the next day. You can't say, oh, you live in a, ha a nice house so you have plenty of food. The food is expensive. That's why you want to stockpile it a little bit at a time. I saw these ladies from the reservation come down here, the Indian reservation. And so they have social services for the Indians, which makes no sense because they get quite a bit of money every month. But it was really interesting and I did a video on it. I'm not sure if I can find it, but uh, try to get the Navajo fry bread recipe and uh, I will try to find that video for you guys. Okay, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe. And God bless you all. Bye.